In this video, we will be talking about reflections. Reflections of points and shapes over lines, like the x-axis or the y-axis, or the line y equals x, which is a diagonal line. But throughout this video, you should be picturing mirror images. And if it helps, picture this adorable kitten looking at his or her reflection. Um, so think about mirror images as we go through this lesson. In problem number one, we are supposed to take this pre-image and reflect it across the x-axis. That means we are going to use the x-axis as the mirror line. So first of all, if you have a point that is on the reflection line, it's not going to move anywhere. So these two points are going to stay exactly where they are. Now, take point E for example, if I reflect it over the line uh, x, it's going to be equally distant on the opposite side of x. So uh, see how point E is four units below the x-axis? Uh, the image is going to be four units above the x-axis. And we will call that E prime. Same thing with point F. Point F is five units down. So uh, the image will be five units up. So this will be point F prime. And while we're at it, we can call this point H prime. And we can uh, call this point L prime. So these four points will uh, reveal the image. So the reflection will look like this. For number two, we will reflect over the y-axis. So we will be using the y-axis as the mirror line, the reflection line. OK, let's start with point W. It's one unit to the right. So the image will be one unit to the left. Point R is two units to the right. So we will go two units to the left of the y-axis. And point B is three units to the right. So we will go three units to the left of the y-axis, and that will be B prime. So the reflection will look like this. Now for problem number three, we are to use the line y equals x as the reflection line. And uh, the line y equals x is a diagonal line that goes at a 45 degree angle uh, just moving up one over one uh, diagonally like this. Now I want to change the color to blue. Okay, so there's our mirror line, our reflection line. So if I'm going to count squares in a similar way that I did on the previous problems, I need to count diagonally now. Okay, so um, look at point Y. It is half of a square diagonally um, away from the reflection line. So if I go half of a square diagonally on the other side, that's going to be the mirror image. Um, now look at point B. Diagonally, this is one, two, three, squares away, three diagonal squares away. So if I go one, two, three diagonal squares away, that should be uh, the image B prime. Okay, look at the point K. Um, diagonally, this is a square and a half away. So if I go a half a square diagonally and then one more, that should be K prime. Okay, the image. Now, finally, let's talk about point D. Point D is one, two, three, and a half diagonal squares away. So there's my half. So now I'm going to continue one, two, three. So this should be the point D prime. Whoops, the image.
Okay, and of course this is the point y prime right here. So these four points reveal the reflection. So the re reflection will look like this. Notice that if I uh, folded the paper along this blue line, the black image and the pink image would uh, fall right on top of each other. The line y equals negative x is also a diagonal line, also a 45 degree angle, but instead of going up from left to right, the, y equals, uh, the line y equals negative x goes down from left to right. So it's going down one, right one, down one, right one. Okay, so um, other than that, we're gonna do the same thing. So um, let's count diagonally uh, and see how far we have to go to the other side. So look at point E. Uh, counting diagonal squares, it is one, two, and a half squares away. So I'm going to continue. There's my half, and now I'm going to go one, two. So this should be the image, which we will call E prime. Okay, now let's do point M. This point is one, two, three diagonal squares away. So I will count one, two, three diagonal squares on the other side. And this will be the image M prime. And now let's do the same thing for B. One, two, three diagonal squares away. So here I go one, two, three diagonal squares on the other side. And this will be the image which we will call B prime. Okay, so the reflection is going to look like this little guy. Now in the next section we're going to be talking about what happens to the coordinates when we do these reflections. So um, it would be helpful to develop some rules since we don't have any graphs to count squares and things like that. It will be better if we can come up with some rules to deal directly with the coordinates. So um, let's see what happened to the coordinates when we did a reflection over the x-axis. Um, let's see, let's pick a convenient point. Um, let's look at point F as an example. So point F, the coordinates of this are uh, 2 comma negative 5. So this was 2 comma negative 5. Now, look at the image of point F. This is the point 2 comma positive 5. So notice, when we do a reflection over the x-axis, the, uh, the x-coordinate doesn't change. But the y-value changes to the opposite sign. So uh, let's write that down as a rule. All right, these are all of the rules that we're going to need, but let's develop them one by one. In each case, let's just use a generic point x comma y and ask ourselves what will happen to it. So might as well set up all of these, x comma y, all the way down. And then we'll talk about what will happen to the pre-image x comma y if we use these four things as the reflection line. So, um, so far we decided that a reflection over the x-axis, the x-coordinate does not change, so that's going to stay x, but the y-coordinate will change signs. So to um, show that, I'm going to put negative y. So remember that in a rule like this, negative y doesn't mean that the y-coordinate will always be negative. This just means that it will be the opposite sign of whatever it was. If it, uh, if it was negative to begin with, it will actually turn positive. Okay, let's look at what happens when we do a reflection over the y-axis. Okay, let's see. Um, a convenient point to use would be W. Okay, let me switch to green again for a second. So. W is the pre-image, and it has the coordinates 1, comma, negative 5. Okay, that's my X and Y. Now, the image, W prime, has coordinates 
negative 1 comma negative 5. So in this case, notice that the y-coordinate didn't change, but the x-coordinate changed signs. So um, when we do a reflection over the y-axis, the x-coordinate is the one that's going to change signs, so I'm going to put negative x. The y-coordinate doesn't change, so I'm just going to leave that as y. Okay, now let's look and see what happens when we do a reflection over the line y equals x. Okay, let's use point D. Okay, point D had the coordinates negative 5 comma 2. Negative 5 comma 2. And then D prime had the coordinates positive 2 comma negative 5. Okay, so what happened? Hmm, it looks like the, uh, the coordinates switched places. So the x became the y and the y became the x. Okay, so how will we write that? If the x and the y are just going to switch places, then xy will become yx. That's how we show that they just switch places. Okay, so finally let's see what happened when you reflect over the line y equals negative x. Okay, let's use point B. So point B has coordinates 4, 2. Alright, so these have the coordinates 4, 2. And then how about B prime? This is negative 2, comma, negative 4. So, what happened? Um, we went from positive to negative, and the values switched places. 4, 2 became 2, 4, and it changed to negative 2 and negative 4. So, they're going to switch places and change signs. So, uh, when we write a rule, we can capture that by switching the x and the y like we did before. So x, y will become y, x. But to show that the signs are also changing, we will make these negative y and negative x, sign changes. Okay, so in addition to having a common sense understanding of counting squares and moving to the opposite side, um, you should also really memorize these rules to help you. Um, it's sort of uh, knowing these rules will be a very useful shortcut. Okay, so now let's use those rules to help us with these problems. So if I want to do a reflection over the line y equals negative x, remember we just decided that um, the coordinates will switch places and change signs. Okay, so if they switch places, then the 5 will be here and the 2 will be here. If they change signs, then uh, the, the positive 2 will become a negative 2 and the negative 5 will become a positive 5. Let's do that again. They're going to switch places and change signs for this. So the 1 will go first and the 4 will go second and they will both change signs, so they will both go from negative to both being positive. Okay, um, now for number six, we're reflecting across the line y equals x. So remember, we learned that in that case, all that happens is that the, the y coordinate changes signs. The x coordinate doesn't change at all. Okay. So, the x-coordinate doesn't change, the y-coordinate will change signs, so this will become a positive 5. The x-coordinate doesn't change at all, the y-coordinate changes signs. So, it looks like if we're reflecting across the x-axis, the x-coordinate doesn't change. So, that will help you remember. Uh, whatever the axis is, 
that's the coordinate that doesn't change signs. So without even looking back at our rules, um, if it's a y-axis reflection, that means it's the y-coordinate that will not change signs. Okay, so um, the x value must change then. So this will become a negative 2, and the y coordinate does not change. This is a y axis reflection. Okay, and again, the negative 4 will change to a positive 4, and the y coordinate will not change. This is a y axis reflection. Okay, and finally, for number 8, when we do a reflection across the line y equals x, um, isn't this the one where we simply switch places, that we, we switch the x and the y? Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So this will become negative 5, comma, 2, and negative 1, comma, negative 4. For the next few problems, we are to um, take the picture that we're given and uh, a pre-image and then the image and uh, we're going to write the transformation in words and then we'll, we will write a rule for it. So um, three of these are, well, let's, I don't know, I haven't counted, but some of these are reflections um, but one of them will be a translation which we learned in a, in a previous video. So for example, um, this one is clearly a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, we can see that this is the reflection line right here. We have these mirror images happening. Um, so we would simply write reflection over the x-axis. And then here's the rule that we developed. Okay, uh, for problem number nine, uh, we see the, the pre-image on the left the image on the right, so clearly the y-axis is the reflection line. So this is a reflection across the y-axis. So I write a little bit big, so I'm going to start all the way over here. Reflection across y-axis. Okay, great. And we learned that when you do that, it is the y value that doesn't change. If it's a y-axis reflection, the y-coordinate doesn't change. The x-coordinate changes signs. Okay, so that would be the rule. Okay, number 10 is, uh, this is the translation. This is not a reflection, uh, right? This um, pre-image is sliding across to the image. All right, it is not reflected. It's not backwards. All right, see how the B is on the right and the B prime is on the right? Obviously, it didn't flip backwards, so that's how you know it is not a reflection. Okay, so this is a translation. So uh, we can go ahead and write that down. Translation. Okay, which means it's just sliding across. So in words, we have to describe how far it moves left and how far it moves up. Remember, the one without the primes is the pre-image, the original. So take point E as a guide. To get to point E prime, we would have to move left 5 and then up 1. So translation left 5 and up one. Now, why did I put an S on this? I'm not sure, I'll erase that later. Okay, so it was left five, so that's X minus five, and up one, so that's Y plus one. All right, nice little review there. Now, back to this one, this is back to being a reflection again. And this is, again, a reflection over the X axis. Okay, you can see the mirror images above and below the x-axis. So this is a reflection across the x-axis. And when you do an x-axis reflection, the x-coordinate doesn't change. 
the y coordinate changes signs. So that's how you would write the rule. All right, last problem number 12 is just uh, practicing our memory of the rules. So try to do this from memory um, without looking back at the notes that we wrote down. So reflection across the x-axis. Um, what's the rule for that? x-axis, the x doesn't change. The y changes uh, to the opposite sign. Reflection across the y-axis, what's that? Well, the y doesn't change, the x does. Y-axis reflection, the y doesn't change. All right, what about reflection across the line y equals x? What's that gonna be? Sure, hopefully you said y comma x. All right, this is the one where the x and the y switch places. Um, what about reflection across the line y equals negative x? What's that gonna be? Hopefully you said negative y comma negative x. This is the one where they switch places and change signs. All right, so make sure you have these rules memorized.